Hi y'all, it's good to see you here again. I wanted to do a quick follow-up on my video about the Hubble glitch happening for 3 weeks now. Since you seem to like the first video, I thought an update with the latest development could be useful. As always, timestamps on links to sources are in the description. And without further ado, let's go! You are probably aware of the events by now, but let's do a very quick recap to be sure everyone is on the same page. On Sunday, June the 13th, Hubble's payload computer halted. There are two main computers on Hubble, one to manage the scientific instruments, that's the payload computer that is currently faulty, and one to manage everything else. Orientation, power, communication, etc, etc. Of course, NASA technicians immediately started to investigate. But it is a bit of a guessing game. Many parts could have led to the glitch, and the only way to effectively find out which one is faulty is to try them one by one. If the glitch remains, then the part is ruled out, and the next part on the list is switched to the backup. And that's the good news. Many, if not all, the parts have backups sometimes several, designed for the specific moment. So far, NASA technicians have tested and therefore ruled out the memory modules, the standard interface hardware, which reduces communications, and the central processing module, that's the processor in itself. All these parts are most likely working just fine. NASA now wants to check the command unit slash science data formatter. This module sends and formats commands and data. As a matter of fact, in 2008, Hubble experienced the exact same glitch and the common unit slash science data formatter happened to be the part that needed to be switched to backup. After the switch, Hubble worked just fine. Luckily for us, in 2009, the servicing mission replaced the entire payload computer bay with newer and updated hardware. And we now still have a backup available. The investigation team has another suspect to check though, the power control unit. This unit is designed to ensure a steady voltage supply to the payload computer's hardware. If any of you ever had to deal with a faulty computer power supply, you know this can lead to weird things and this could very well be the faulty element. In order to know which element is the cause of the glitch, NASA technicians have to alternatively switch them to a backup element just as they did to check the previous modules. However, the team must complete a more complicated operation procedure to switch to the backup unit. This procedure would be more complex and riskier than the team executed last week. To switch to the backup command unit slash science data formatter or power regulator, several other hardware boxes on the spacecraft must also be switched due to the way they are connected to the science instrument, command and data handling unit. Next week should be dedicated to re reviewing the procedures and practicing the operations on a high fidelity simulator, so don't expect any update soon. Watch this video if you want way more details on the chain of events and NASA's early actions. This was my first video on the subject and so far the most liked on the channel. 